Hey everyone, it's Melanie and I'm proud to be presenting this video with favequilts.com F-A-V-E-Q-U-I-L-T-S This video is going to be an introduction to free motion quilting. Uh, what you absolutely need to have is a sewing machine and a darning foot or a free motion foot. I bought mine on eBay um, for like $15 so uh, make sure you have a free motion foot um, that's compatible with your machine um, and it's uh, pretty good for you to be able to drop your feed dogs um, on your machine. So those are th things you need to have before you can get started free motion quilting. The other things that I recommend are um, gloves that have these little grippies on them. Um, you can even do gardening gloves. These aren't gardening gloves but they look like it. Um, or they sell special free motion quilting gloves. They're very helpful. Um, you want to have a fresh needle. You want to move your stitch length to zero. And, you know, first, before you start free motion quilting your actual quilt, you are going to want to practice because uh, it can be real tricky with the tension. Your bobbin thread can pull or your top thread can not look right. So what you want to do really before you start free motion quilting something you've spent a lot of time on is to practice with some scrap fabric and batting just to get an idea of how your machine is going to respond how well your free motion foot is going to do how well you know you can maneuver the fabric around it's going to be a lot better um, for you to practice on that and get a feel for how it's going to go where your tension settings should be because your hands are what is creating the stitch length, right? Because your feed dogs aren't working. You're, you're moving the fabric around yourself. So if you go too fast, your stitches are gonna be too large. And if you go too slow, they're gonna be really teeny tiny. If you make any mistakes, you're not gonna be able to pick them out. And it's just not gonna look great. Right. What you want them to be is, you know, evenly spaced, the same length. It's gonna make it look more professional. So those are some things that I recommend. Also, you want to have a nice, good quality thread. Um, I am using a coordinating thread. Um, I usually like to use 100% cotton and a nice quality. Uh, you don't want your thread breaking. Um, but you can mess around with whatever mach you know your machine does better with. If it's polyester thread, um, and you like the way that that's working for you, go ahead and do that. Um, my thing is just to make sure that it's good quality, that it's you know not giving you any trouble. And sometimes the polyester can be a little uh, strong, especially if your quilt has a lot of just 100% cotton material. Um, sometimes I'll, I like to keep it consistent, but, but you don't have to. Whatever works is fine. Also make sure you have a full bobbin ready to go because this is going to use up a lot of thread maybe even a few extra bobbins depending on how large of a quilt you want a free motion and um, if your machine has a needle down position mine does not but if your machine has a needle down position you're going to want to have that set up because then when you stop you want your needle to be down um, I have to then just manually put mine down but it's a really nice feature if your machine does have that for the free motion quilting Make sure your machine is ready and um, let's get started. So what you want to do is bring your bobbin thread up. I'm going to drop this down. I'm going to s and hold on to this and then pull this up. And then you're going to pull this thread up like that so that you're now your bobbin. My bobbin thread is a different color um, because it's coordinating with my backing fabric. But you just want to bring it up so that you have all the threads out of the way so they don't get tangled on the back side. Okay, so once you have your threads all ready to go and out of the way and you've got your gloves on, you want to kind of have a game plan. So I've done a good portion of this quilt already, um, but just as you're practicing with your scraps, think about how you like to maneuver the quilt around. It's easier to move the quilt down than to push it up, and you want to make sure that most of your quilt is up on a table, it's not dragging down, because it's going to be a lot easier to maneuver the fabric around um, if it's not 
you know, you're not dealing with all of that bulk and the weight. Your stitches will look a lot better. So I'll show you kind of how fast I go. Don't be afraid, just stop. If you're feeling like it's out of control, you're going too fast, just stop, put your needle down and kind of readjust. It's not a big deal to do that. all the way over to the edge and then back stitch in the same like stitch around in the same spot to secure your end but over where it's going to be hidden by the binding okay that's it okay so now you free motion quilted your quilt um, keep in mind a few things when you're deciding what type of design to do, I did just a meandering design. You can do whatever you want, but try to keep it consistent throughout your entire quilt. A lot of times as you go, you loosen up or you tighten up. And so you kind of want to think through, you know, maybe how, break it down into each, you know, little square. How much quilting is there gonna be in each one? That way you can keep it consistent all the way throughout. The other thing you want to do is just make sure that you relax and go slow. Sometimes it can be a little hard on your shoulders. If you are feeling like you don't like the way that it's looking, just don't worry about it. Just slow down or stop and it, it takes some practice to get used to it. I have spent hours fighting with my machine over tension or all of these things. So don't be discouraged if it takes you a little bit of time to get it right um, and have it how, the, how you want it to look. Thanks for watching this video. I hope that this was helpful for you. Learn how to free motion quilt. Um, the possibilities are endless uh, when you can add this type of personalization to your quilt. Um, check out favequilts.com and, and you'll see a lot more tutorials and inspiration on that site. Thanks for watching. Bye.